Mad Dog and Merrill here, and we're in beautiful Door County at the Maritime Museum in Sturgeon Bay, and we're here to research shipwrecks of years past. Shipwreck beer, that is, matey. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back with that, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, shipwreck beer on the way. Yeah. Hey, Mad Dog, how did the burger propose marriage? I don't know, Merrill. How did the burger propose marriage? With an onion ring. <laughs> <laughs> Join the exclusive Mad Dog and Merrill Grillin' Club. Every member receives the official Grillin' Club t-shirt and towel. Discover new recipes, chat with fellow grillers, watch valuable videos, learn new jokes, or submit a unique recipe for a chance to see it on our show. Log in now for your chance to share in the Grillin' Club. View past episodes of our show by going to maddogandmerrill.com and click on Midwest Grillin'. Hey folks, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. You know, we're going to be talking with Brewmaster Rich from Shipwreck Brewery. And, and it's great to have great brews like Shipwreck because you got diversity, you have choices. Right, right. And in grilling, there's one great thing about cooking with beer. There's one great thing yes. about cooking with beer. Right. And, and, and that's the different flavors that you get when you're cooking with beer. And there's two great things about cooking with beer. Life's good. Hey, I'm going to talk a little bit about brines right, right now. All right, go right ahead, sir. And, and brines have uh, three major ingredients. You need moisture in a brine because the sea salts open up the pores of the meat and lets the moisture in. Uh, today, and it's wonderful to work with, I'm going to do the cherry wheat uh, from Shipwreck Brewery, the cherry wheat. And I'm going to brine some nice pork loin chops, boneless pork loins. And we have sea salt, we have kosher salt. Uh, one of the sodiums is blessed by the rabbi, that would be the sea salt. Uh, the other one is harvested and uh, from seas and let dried and this natural sodium in the water becomes sea salts. And the different flavors throughout the world create different qualities and different flavors of sea salts throughout the world. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, oh, oh. But if you look underneath a microscope, real quick, if yeah. you look underneath a microscope with sea salts, it's beautiful felt layers of different gorgeous sea salts that melt in your palate. Okay? You follow Not me so in your far? mouth, in your palate. You got her. <laughs> but they take this wonderful stuff and they pulverize the dickens out of it. They run it into little BBs and they make table salt. So we're going to do sea salt so it opens up the pores. Okay. We're going to take a little bit of onion. That's our flavorizer today. Are those my onions? No, those are my <laughs> onions. We had a little argument <laughs> off air. So I'm going, to do, I'm going to do onions in there. We're going to use a bottle of beer of nice cherry wheat shipwreck brewery. We're going to add a little bit of sea salt to open up the pores. I'm going to add some maple syrup. And our flavorizer today, we're going to add our, gar our nature's garden marinade, which is a teriyaki marinade. And I marinated these for about 18 hours. These are pork loin chops. Wow. And we marinated the pork loin chops. Here's how you present them to the grill. You take them out of the brine, you plop them on the countertop, you pat them dry so you don't have the brine on the outside. You glisten them with a little fat Louis olive oil, a little organic fat Louis olive oil or your flavor. You season them up with a little bit of grandma hazels and then you present them to the grill for about four to five minutes on both sides. And I'm just gonna grab a loin right here okay. on the grill. Oh God, I was worried. <laughs> And we're just going to slice into our pork loin, and we're going to see lots of moisture there because we added the brine to it. It's actually absorbing the moisture and the flavor because of the sea salts and the wonderful shipwreck brew. Big difference. Big difference. That is for sure. Hey, let me show you my legs. I got the loins, and you got the legs, well, I baby. I got the legs. Look at them babies, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll tell you turkey what. Turkey legs. You know, you go to the Renaissance Fair, everybody wants to know how do you do turkey legs. Take a piece of that. Okay. Go ahead. Honest to goodness. Oh, it's moist. Not delicious. Give me a whole slice, though. I could have when I'm mm. done. Okay, do your turkey legs. I apologize. Well, I want to talk about pork. Pork's are delicious. All right. Mm. How do you do turkey legs? Turkey legs are very easy to do a grill. This is how they do it at the Renaissance Fair. As you can see, I've browned these up, but let me show you how to prep these. It's very easy to do. Is what I'll use is that I like using some citrus, some lemons. You could squeeze them on there or just throw them right in this pan where I've got three legs. Never knew I was a three-legged man, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and then there again, I'll let you open up the. Uh, oh, you lemonade. need some of this? I need some of this. I thought you were thirsty. Well, I was thirsty. So you have a little. What beer do you have in there? The beer Merrill? I have today, sir, is the Captain's Copper. Captain's Copper Ale. Yep. Very good. A little bit of lemonade. Yeah, got a little. Uh, add some nice flavor on there. Now, actually, what I'm going to do this, which we always joked, oh, I add a lot more than that. Fill her up. Fill her up. Fill her. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're really going to check the oil too. Yeah, check the oil. Look How about underneath the, the tank there. All right. All right. Got that on there. What I'm going to do is just wrap this up in foil. 
Whoa, it's that stomach. Excuse what me. I'm gonna do is wrap this up in foil, place it on the grill, grill it direct for about approximately uh, 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, I'm parboiling this. I'm listening. And then I'm gonna take the legs out and then brown them up and put a little barbecue sauce on them. Uh, I don't know, how, what bar I'm gonna put any barbecue sauce on them. My barbecue <laughs> sauce, well, there it is, I got worried. Place a little hickory barbecue sauce, last 20 minutes, sear them up really good. They come out really nice and juicy. And I got really the nice giggles. Moist. You got the giggles? I got the giggles. He's got the giggles. He's gonna take the legs off from him. I'm gonna take my legs along with his loin. loins. I'll see you later. <laughs> no way. What? Okay. okay. I'll see you later. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> if you have a comment or suggestion about today's show, contact us at maddogandmerrill.com. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook. Hey, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest. Grilling. I'll tell you what, we're having a great time here today with over 6,000 to 10,000 shipwrecks in the Great Lakes, 3,000 shipwrecks alone in Lake Michigan. Really? Who better to bring in for our next segment than Rich Zilke, the brewmaster at Shipwreck Brewery in Egg Harbor. Rich, thank, thank you so much. You thank you for coming, sir. Thank you. He's my type of shipmate, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, brewmaster. <laughs> I want to go in the ship with him. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't boilers down below. <laughs> oh, they're not? <laughs> no. Oh, nobody told me that. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going to have some fun. We're, uh, once again, we're going to have some fun with some great uh, shipwreck brew. I'm going to be doing the, uh, the Bayside Blonde because I want a nice, light, clean beer that's going to add some great flavor to the light chicken and have the brew flavor, but not take away from the chicken so much. Well, I'm going to do the Peninsula Porter because I want a heavy, heavy taste. I got sirloin steak Ooh. already cut up, marinated with a little bit of fat Louis olive well, oil. Well, you know that the Shipwreck Brewery in Egg Harbor does a nice pot roast with the porter. Ah! Just true. Beautiful yes, gravy. Yeah, I bet yeah, you that really adds to the old beef flavor on that. Yeah, the complexity in the beer really adds a lot. Uh, yeah. Sets a lot of flavors off in the food. Well, it actually went the, the cherry, the cherry wheat for a vinaigrette? Yes, yeah, on the salads, and oh, that's, that's just one of a yeah. kind. Uh, yeah. really let's, let's talk a little bit about the Shipwreck Brewery. It's actually open year-round. Right, up in Egg Harbor, um, we do seven different beers on tap. Uh, we also do four beers in uh, bottled six-packs that we distribute throughout Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, we're even in the Chicagoland area new this year. So, uh, and you folks in the Twin Cities. Twin Cities as well, yeah. Twin Cities. So look, look for it on the shelves. Why don't you explain each one of the ones that we yeah. have in front of us sure, the folks yeah. in Twin Cities in Wisconsin. The Peninsula Porter is uh, is our darkest one. And again, it's got uh, uh, overtones of coffee and, and roasted and really uh, unique ingredient to use in food. Uh, Temperature-wise, can you serve it? Do you, do you serve it a little chilled, right? Yeah, darker beers you tend to serve a little bit warmer, depending on your on your palate. Right. But sure, no problem there. Uh, we have the Bayside Blonde. That's kind of our, our daily drinker, one of sure. our lighter ones. Uh, we have a. That's why I chose it. There you go. <laughs> we have a. Captain. I go with the heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in between, we've got the Captain's Copper. That's a amber ale. Okay. One of my favorites. By and the then, way. of course, our staple, the Door County Cherry Wheat. Right. Which, uh, it's a one-of-a-kind flavor with the Montmorency cherries in Door County. So you know, I got to tell you, like we were staying in Sturgeon Bay and we're down in the pool with these folks, and they were drinking some shipwreck beer. And they says, where are you? And they go, oh, we go up to the shipwreck brewery. And I go, well, that's great. He goes, we've been gone for the last five years. Is there anything else to see up north of, uh, of the shipwreck <laughs> of brewery? Yeah. That's the end of the line. <laughs> that was the end of the line for them. <laughs> well, hey, let's, let's, let's get down to a little bit of cooking. Right, okay. And now, uh, Rich, I, I, you don't have the, the time to do a, uh, much grilling, do you? Not really, no. And, and, yeah. and, we, and we're, we're filming this in, in, in August, in July here, and this last week was that, that big stretch of 90 degree weather, and you hit 104 in, 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 in your brew house. In yeah. the brew house. Wow. We're, we're boiling 600 uh, gallons of beer at one time, yeah. so that'll heat the place up. So there. do Rich a favor and drink some of that shipwreck brew to make it all worth this <laughs> while, actually. You know, I don't have a, do you have a can opener, Rich? Uh, I think I've got you covered, yeah. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, thank you. You've had an old twist off, I, I've it? been wow. wanting to do injectable so long on this show and, and, and injectables are fun because it's an inside out marinade right cuts of meat are getting leaner and leaner so whether this was pork whether this was wild game a beautiful chicken breast on the grill I'm gonna do a nice little injectable uh, we don't want anything to clog up the the injectable system itself so I've got a little bit of onion powder in there to begin with all right and I'm gonna take a little bit of the Bayside blonde ale and you can use any one of the shipwreck brews but I'm gonna do a little Bayside blonde I'm gonna mix up that garlic that onion powder 
And I'm going to add a little bit of spicy barbecue sauce. That's interesting. With, oh, it, it, I did some last night. I got them on the grill. I want to cut into okay. them so bad, but we got to wait till I do the injectables All here. Right. <laughs> I'm going to add just a couple slivers of jalapenos in there to create a little more flavor. And all we're going to do is give that a nice little shaking and mix all those ingredients up. Mix the jalapenos, mix the spicy barbecue sauce, the beautiful blonde ale. And I'm going to take my injectable. I've got the chicken breast here. Hold on now, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Here we go. Nice and slow. Beautiful. All right. Okay, here we go. Watch this chicken breast now. And it's, it's like going to the dentist. As you, as you inject in, you pull out at the same time, Rich. So I'm going to inject in a little bit. And it's going to squirt just a little bit at the end. In several different Should areas. Should be wearing a mask. <laughs> and it's, it's a great way to add a marinade. I marinated some overnight, and all I simply do is pat them dry, add a little oil, I added a little bit of uh, Grandma Hazel's over the top, and I think we should cut into one of those. You got Let me grab one. They're, 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 they're the four R that I did on the grill. And here, and here, let's just see if we can add some nice flavor. Uh, there's the injectables on the inside. Oh, beautiful job, sir. So the nice. flavor cuts all the way through the inside of that beautiful chicken breast, and you don't want to overcook them. These are great. You guys That's do your good. recipe. I'll test this out. All right, okay. All right. <laughs> we're going to do a little quick porter, porter uh, beer here. I've got some steaks, sirloin. Mm. If you get that away, if you could open that for me, sir. All right. Mm. Then porter, put about a half a, oh, a half a bottle in there. Six okay. ounces of porter. You got it. Porter's Please. really good. It's got a good flavor to it. That's mm. perfect. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of it. It's sort of funny. We don't ever talk about what we're doing. I'm adding some of our garlic barbecue sauce into this because I like garlic. The porter and the garlic. The porter well. and the garlic, and I'm using onion powder. I thought you were going to have Rich hold the bag for you. I <laughs> was, but we're getting short on time here, no, so we're, we're going to mix that up. We got lots. Lots of time. <laughs> but to mix that all together, actually use a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in here. If you grab me, got the Worcestershire. Yeah. The W, put that in there. Let this go over like two hours or so. You can leave it overnight. But it I'd comes out really nice, rich, very flavorful. Rich is right next to you. Is he? Is it rich? Okay. And then I oh, got some on the grill here. Hey, that looks delicious. It's tiki. Light that baby up, man. You got her. Look at that. A little toast on the side. A little toast on the side. Hey, Rich, while he's doing that, we've got a, a, you've got a great festival, a first-time festival in Egg Harbor, September 22nd. Right. Now, this show, that, that's about a month away. So September 22nd. Right. It's our first annual. It's called the Egg Harbor Ale Fest. Uh, should be about... A hundred different uh, microbreweries from around the Midwest. Uh, there's not some just great not Wisconsin. just microbrew beers. A hundred different breweries. Absolutely, yeah. A hundred. Uh, he can't even count that high. Uh, unlimited yeah. sampling, so you really get to try a bunch of different flavors. There's so much going on in Wisconsin microbrews right now, so it's it's a good chance to get exposed to a bunch of different styles. Of and, and, and there's a website for that. It's called eggharboralefest.com, and they can go on shipwreck microbrew.com to learn more on both the Shipwreck Brewery and the Open Year Round for the menus and the great ales and, and beers that are on tap right. there. Right, and you can uh, snatch up your tickets for the Brew Fest at uh, eggharboralefest.com because they're going fast. Yeah, I bet they are. It should be a good time. Yes. Yeah, well, Looking Rich, thank you it. so much. I yes, know you gotta, you gotta get back to the the, 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 brew, the brew house and do a little sweating in the, in the brew house there. Right, but, but we're we, gonna make some more. So, all right, uh, good. Don't run out. Whatever we do, don't dry out the well, okay? <laughs> all right, we'll be right back with more of Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grill. And you folks in Wisconsin, you folks in Minnesota, you make sure you pick up some great ship Shipwrecked Brewery in four different great flavors in the bottles. We'll be right back. View past episodes of our show by going to maddogandmerrill.com and click on Midwest Grilling. It has been reported that Mad Dog and Merrill's signature sauces and spices have been seen around the world. And now we want to know where in the world is Mad Dog and Merrill? Take a selfie photo of yourself holding a Mad Dog and Merrill's product in front of a sign or interesting landmark. Post the photo to Mad Dog and Merrill's Facebook page and once a month, one lucky fan will win a grilling set of Mad Dog and Merrill's products. Go to Facebook.com slash Mad Dog and Merrill. Happy grilling. Hey, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. We are at the uh, Door County Maritime Museum. And you know, didn't that brewmaster Rich remind you of uh, of somebody? Yeah, a pirate. Right? I like this guy. Can, can, can. Anyway, hey, right behind us, folks, is is the is the is the Rose 
Sim Simmons. Rolf Simmons. Rolf Simmons. And, and no, it's not either. That's sunk. This is the this is the John Previs. Oh really? A tugboat. Yeah, we'll talk about Rolf's in just a moment. <laughs> the Rolf's sunk. But they're actually giving a tour right now, and this is one of the tours you can take at the Maritime Museum. Yeah, the Rolf Simmons actually was called the Christmas tree ship. Oh, is that the one that brought all the Christmas trees? To down to Chicago market yeah. during the holiday seasons. And There's it was a back. Book. It was a, yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, nice websites too. Yeah. November 26, 1912. It was taking its last run. Okay. And it, and it had its full crew plus 10 lumberjacks. Gotcha. And it was taking its last runs and it went into the teeth of a it, it was going into the teeth of a blizzard gale. Oh, man. <laughs> it went into the teeth of a blizzard gale. We were talking with Bob, the executive director here at the museum, and he said. November is not a good month for ships. <laughs> oh, I bet it isn't. So there's a lot of great shipwrecks, a lot of great shipwreck beers when you come to Door County. We're going to do a mop sauce right All now. All right, good. Let you me show these racks. No, but I was, I've been slow cooking. I've been slow cooking on our Phoenix grill some wonderful racks of ribs. I just want to show you. Here's the way. First of all, that bone pulled right out of there. Yeah. But they just, they just rip right apart. You know, that's a rack of ribs right there, and I've slow cooked those, but I want to do a nice mop sauce. So as they're slow cooking, you want to do a mop sauce. If you add a heavy bar barbecue sauce with lots of sugars, it's going to burn. That's right, exactly. So we have in here a little bit of diced onion. I've got some lemon. I'm going to squeeze a half a lemon. I've already got one in there already, a nice wedge, so we'll do a, a three quarters of a lemon. <laughs> yeah. Three quarters of a wedgie? Yeah, a little wedgie. Okay. And, and so we add a little bit of lemon in there. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic salt in there, and it's kind of a refrigeration day for cleaning out for mop sauces. But it's low sodium. We got a little bit of Worcestershire in there. A lot of times down south, they use a lot of pepper and garlic, so we're doing grilling magic, okay. which is a low sodium garlic pepper blend. So lots of garlic pepper. A lot of times they use a stick butter. Uh, today we're going to use a nice little rosemary uh, olive oil. So I'm going to pour a couple tablespoons. There's the rosemary. Is that the ship? Yeah. No. <laughs> About a quart low, though. Hold on. Yep, there it is. Quart low. Uh, I chose today the porter, the peninsula like porter. The porter. A nice, a nice heavy beer. Uh, so we're going to add the Peninsula Porter inside of there and just a couple dashes of hot sauce. And you don't have to write this recipe down, but kind of create it with your own ideas. But low in sugar. And a lot of times down south they have this mop looking thing. Right, exactly. Uh, like but we have to clean a toilet bowl. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you the truth. And so as our, as our racks of ribs are grilling, you simply mop it to keep moisture on them and slow cook them oh. every once in a while and keep them mopping. Yeah, I love it. Keep I love it. Especially it's got a dry rub on it. It's absolutely fantastic. It really is. Yeah, it has exactly. Here. It actually has some of our seasonal on there. Ah, yeah. that's our number one seller, seasonal. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Okay. Is it? Is it? Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, hey, I'm a, we call it a Cajun boil. You can call it whatever you want, but this is very easy to do. It's made with shrimp. Well, I've taken some kielbasa. I've cut some kielbasa up, threw it in a pan. I sliced up some lemon, sliced it up, threw it in a pan. I went ahead and took some red potatoes, placed them, put them in a pan. Hey. Did you get that? Did I lose you? Nope. Okay. I was just talking about last time I had a Cajun boil. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Come on, right up, but I'll stop. Sweet corn. You cut the sweet corn up, place it right up. Place in the pan. Normally, I'll start the potatoes first, put some water. I uh, use any type of beer. Captain's Copper comes out absolutely great. Uh, start up the potatoes, let them go for about 20 minutes, then add all the other ingredients the kielbasa, the sweet corn, and the shrimp. And let me show you what you got here. Can we see? You can see. Let this... me get my great hot mints. We'll sell these to you folks online, two for a buck. This looks absolutely delicious. There it is. really is. And it's a great way to do it. And you know what? That Captain's Copper adds a great yes, flavor it to it. Here it really does. Look at that, baby. The corn in there, the shrimp in there, the taters oh. in there, the kibasa, the onion, oh. the beer, the butter. Life's good, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Oh, man. Sit back, have a copper ale. You could serve have a copper two. ale with this? Yes, you could serve anything in there. Really? And the shrimp. Is, so whether it's, it's really the mop delicious. sauces with the, with the shipwreck brew in, uh, the beautiful Cajun boil with mm. the beer in, beer is wonderful to cook with. Shipwreck Brewery, don't forget to go online, online at shipwreckmicrobrew.com, shipwreckmicrobrew.com, and learn more about doing the, and don't forget that great event coming up on September 22nd, yep. Brewfest in Egg Harbor, going to be a great time. You got it. I can't wait to go there. 
I bet you're going to be there. I better believe it. I'm 100 microbrews, you better believe it. I love it. Hey, we'll be right back to wrap this baby That's up. That's right. If you have a comment or suggestion about today's show, contact us at maddogandmerrill.com. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook. Well, I'll tell you what, we've had a great day today. If our camera guy is swift enough, we've got the fireboat tour behind us here. You're right. And it's an old fireboat that used to pump gallons of water in case there was a fire port cider on a ship. That would be the rescue boat right there. And you can take tours when you come to Sturgeon Bay here uh, at the Door County Maritime Museum, along with all the great other things that go on in Door it County. It is a beautiful place over here. You know, really there, is. there are over 3,000 shipwrecks in Lake Michigan. 3,001, 3,002, 3,004, 3,005, 3,006, 3,007. No, 3,006. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the shipwreck stop right here in Door County. Don't forget to visit Egg Harbor. Don't forget Brewfest in Egg Harbor, September 22nd. Over 100 microbrews from Wisconsin there, and it's going to be a great time. Or you can go online at shipwreck microbrew.com to learn more about the great menus, the hours that Shipwreck is open, and it's always a great time here in Door County. Yes, Merrill, I is. think it's time for us to discover our own Shipwreck. I think so. I'm ready to dive in. 3,008, 3,009, 3,010. Think you can stop right there. We don't even have to go that 3,011, 3,012, right, 3,013, 3,014. Goodbye. Everybody. 14. Goodbye. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin' is a production of Lashbro Visual Communications.